looking at this map, I guess there wasn't a mountain or a lowland I hadn't traveled over. If it wasn't one thing, it was another. Trapping or scouting or just plain hunting for food to stay alive. I'd seen the wagon trains moving west over the Sierras, bound for the good ranching land in California. And at different times, I'd seen four different flags fly over that territory. Yes, sir, that California was sure a rich prize for the country that could hold it. Right now, it was Mexico running California's government. And the fellow in charge was the commander of all Mexican forces in the area, General Rafael Torino. And General Torino was going to hold on to California, no matter how he had to do it, even if it meant making a deal with the Indians. Shoshones bid you welcome. It is an honor to meet the great leader of our Shoshone brothers. We are met here to arrange a treaty? An alliance between your people and mine. But an alliance is for fighting together. Precisely. Your people and mine have a common enemy, Chief. The white Yankees who swarm over the mountains to engulf our land. All white men are ready to steal Indian lands. Not my government. We will guarantee your lands forever if you will help us keep California from the Yankees. The wagon trains are armed with guns. My braves have only bows and spears and knives. We would have no chance. I'm aware of that. And if you will sign an alliance with us, Lieutenant Ruiz, we will arm your braves with rifles. Like this, and plenty of powder and shot. How does it work? Put it to your shoulder. Pull back the hammer. Point the barrel. Then, pull the trigger here. sign a treaty with us, I will also assign Lieutenant Ruiz as my liaison. He will teach your braves to shoot. What will you decide? The Shoshones will sign with you. No white man shall pass our lands. We'd been trapping in the mountains for a solid year without having a speck of Indian trouble. I guess our luck had been too good to hold out. Maybe it's because we were in a hurry to get to Fort Bridger with our furs that Beaver Lopez and I moved on ahead of the other boys. Well, it's a good thing we did. Uh, we sure got plenty skins. We get back to Fort Bridger, folks ain't gonna believe that there are many beaver skins in the whole wide world. <laughs> hey, Jim, we go back to the same place next year? Lopez, we never go back no place. <laughs> Are you just going back someplace where you've been, Lopez? When there's so many places you ain't been. Jim, trouble with you is you got a disease, a rising fever. Always got to see what's on the other side of the hill. And I'll tell you, I'll be mighty glad to ride over these hills. I got a feeling this country is bad medicine. Here. What's the matter? Come on. Hey, Jim. Then there's engine pony tracks. Yeah. She's showing these today. Kind of funny they took off to the wood instead of staying with the trail, though. He's been awful quiet. We know here a bird trip for over a week. Yeah, too quiet. Oh, you two are imagining things. I'll bet you five beaver skins there ain't an engine within 20 miles of here. Am I 
you dream of giving them Shoshones have guns. <laughs> they got guns, all right. Don't you forget, you owe me five beaver skins. Yeah? Bet you five more I don't live to pay you. They're gonna rush. <laughs> now listen to me. Wait until you can't miss. Then pick off the chief. That way, maybe we can break them up. No, 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 the shoulder, it's uh, just a bruise. Think we can make it? That old Shoshone war party's out there hiding that rib. Yeah, our only chance to get out of here before daylight. Lucky for us, these engines don't like to pack at night. Seeing some of the dead Indians and our boys lying out there gave me an idea. If I could get those Shoshones riding off on a wild goose chase, it'd give us a chance to get out of the trap. One thing had sure been bothering me, though. This was the first time Shoshones had ever used guns. And I was wondering where they got them. They're plumbing. <clears throat> All set? Yeah. Okay. If I don't meet you at Badger Pass by sundown tomorrow, you'll know I ain't coming. And remember to yell loud. We were counting on that war party, not knowing whether the fellers on the horses were dead or alive. And by the time they found out, we'd be gone. you, Fort Bridger was a mighty welcome sight. We'd lost all our furs, but at least we three still had our own hair. Somehow, old Charlie Bridger had managed to make his fort look like home. Yes, sir, home to a lot of wandering mountain men. Well, I hate to say it, but you're gonna live. Yeah, it's a wonder with your kind of doctrine, Charlie. <laughs> you say uh, an engine shot him, Stockton? Charlie, we've been trapping up in the high country for over a year. Those Indians, all with rifles, like this. Hit us on the way down. Got our whole year's bag of furs, all prime skins. Did you ever see one like that before? Not east of California. What? That's a Spanish rifle, kind the Mexican army uses. Well, now, that makes for some mighty interesting questions. Uh -huh. How bad do you want the answers? Let me have them, Charlie. Well, now, I was just thinking, uh, the best place to look would be California. And, uh, since you three will be needing a stake anyway after losing a year's take of furs... Yeah? Uh, well, there's a wagon party here that's just itching to leave for California. Uh, but the guide they hired uh, came down with a bad case of rattlesnake bite. You mean you want us to hire out as wagon guides? Well, unless you go to better off them. They're all nice folks. I can fix it with Mr. Wright, the wagon master. How's the pay? Good. Now, I'm having a sort of celebration tonight, a uh, kind of party for the folks here. Why don't you all come along and uh, talk to them anyway? 
Well, he ain't got nothing to lose. We don't like him. We don't have to take him. <laughs> well, in that case, we're going to need a bat. Me? Well, I'm practically on my deathbed. Come on, get up out of there. That bullet hole won't let enough water in to drown you. Get him up, Lopez. See you on the oh, no, 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 all right. <laughs> Boy, this is great. <laughs> hey, all I feel is wet. <laughs> well, this is what they call a bath. No wonder these frontier savages wash so seldom. I could ask the Indian girl for uh, warm water and a tub, Consuela. No, Augustina. I've been dreaming of a decent bath ever since we started this trip. We'll make do. I've been thinking how wonderful this is going to be all the way down here. <laughs> how about you, Lopez? Uh, no me gusta, amigo. No me gusta. <laughs> Man. Right over there. Next to us. Want some salt, Beaver? Oh, that can't be it. Can't be drunk. I don't want it. <laughs> all right, suit yourself. I got the darn stuff in my own. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> like a mule. <laughs> Folks, this is Miss Consuela Montalvo. She's going home to California. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Wright are running the wagon train. I do, folks. We're happy to have you with us. May I present my aunt, Signora Agostina Guterma. <laughs> the wonderful rumor really true? This lovely young lady is actually going west with us? I'm afraid I haven't... Lieutenant George Kilpatrick, ma'am. Command of your military escort. We need a military escort? Uh, just a coincidence, ma'am. Now, my men and I are on a survey mission to Oregon. We thought it would be pleasanter to travel with the train as far as the California border. We should be happy to have your company, Lieutenant. The frontier must seem a strange place to you. But once you get used to the people... I don't intend to stay here long enough for that. If I dared tell you of the experience I had today... <laughs> Hey, here's the galoot we've been waiting for. <laughs> now we can eat. Your new guide, Mr. Wright, Jim Stockton. Howdy, Mr. Yeah, Wright. Well, I'm happy to have you with us. About time you showed. Sorry. Grab yourself some drinking liquor. Come meet the folks. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant, senorita, I'd like you to meet the best mountain man west of the divide, Jim Stockton. You. Something wrong, ma'am? How can you allow this barbarian? Me? Well, doggone, Jim. If that ain't the little old gal you took a bath with. <laughs> <laughs> we were on our way, and in spite of Miss Montavo's objections, I hired on a scout of the train, with Beaver and Lopez to back me up. Moving west, a wagon train just got to face whatever nature and the elements have to offer and still keep going. We got hot sun on the plains and all the rain we could use once we hit the mountain passes. But while we were having our troubles, General Torina, the Mexican commander, was stirring up more trouble in California, even for his old friends like Don Carlos Montalvo. General. General Torina, señor Montalvo. Si, pasen, por favor. Rafael, my old friend, oh. This is my aide, Lieutenant Felipe Ruiz. Don Carlos Montalvo, my oldest friend. Lieutenant Ruiz, welcome. Toyon, a bottle of the Madeira and glasses, rapidamente. Do your men desire anything? We cannot stay. Cannot stay? When it has been 
How long since you visited the Montalvo Rancheria? We have urgent matters. Well, at least we can have a glass of wine together. Spanish wine, not California. About all I have left to remind me of the country of my birth. Don Carlos, this is something more than a friendly visit. Huh? As you know, the situation in the province is chaotic. It is necessary to the discharge of my duties and responsibilities that I know the sentiments of everyone, even old friends. Sentiments? Towards the new California Republic. I see. You know why California wishes independence. It is because we have been neglected, ignored by Mexico City. I know only that we owe loyalty to Mexico, and it is our duty to preserve California for our government. I am a Spaniard. To me, Mexico is a foreign government. And the United States is not? Your daughter, Consuela, is living there, verdad? Oh, she was for a while. But she has been spending the past few years with her grandparents in Spain. She will be home soon. On what ship? Oh, not by sea. By one of the wagon trains. Wagon trains? General, the Shoshones. What about the Shoshones? They are our allies. Allies. Helping us keep more Yankees from coming into California. How? Oh, by attacking the wagon trains? That is the only way they could help you, isn't it? Consuelita will be on the wagon train when the Shoshone butchers. To shoot you is the last thing I wish to do, Rafael. But I will not see Consuela sacrificed. What will you do, Carlos? I will ride to the east, warn the wagon trains. Put down the gun, my old friend. It is no use. Do not come any closer, Rafael. Put down the gun before you could fire. You will remain here under guard, in house arrest, until the rebellion is crushed. It is better this way, my old friend. Then no one can accuse you of disloyalty. And I am sorry about Consuela. Truly sorry. Madera, Don Carlos. The nearer we got to California, the more I began to wonder why we hadn't seen a single Indian. Didn't seem we had a right to expect that much luck. Those weeks of peace, though, gave me plenty of time to get to know Consuelo Montavo. <laughs> and I guess it gave Lieutenant Kilpatrick time, too. But just the way Consuela sat on that wagon like a little queen made me feel more and more like what she'd call me back at Fort Bridger, a barbarian. You must eat, Consuela. The journey will go harder. You need your strength. All right, Augustina. I will try. ma'am. That's prime young buffalo. Shot it myself just this morning. So that's it. Practically raw. At my father's hacienda, meat is never served without being properly cured and hung. <laughs> I'm afraid this is a far cry from your hacienda, Senorita. Now, to me, that's mighty fine eating. This rice puts some fancy dried grass in the stew and gives it a real nice flavor. Yeah, nothing like having a woman around to make things real nice. Of that, I never expected to hear from Jim Stockton. Oh, I got nothing against womankind, ma'am. As a matter of fact, one of these days, I'm going to pick me out one and keep her. Well, why wait? There's several girls on the train, young, pretty, unmarried. Surely one of them would jump at the chance to claim a, a rugged specimen like... But they're white girls. What did you say? Yeah, they're white. Now, what would a man like me want of one of them frail little critters?
Well, I don't understand. Well, now, suppose I was to latch on to one. I'd be stuck. I'd be spending the rest of my life taking care of her and doing the chores. But if you're her husband... <sighs> now, you take a nice little Indian gal. I'd shoot me a buffalo, and right away, she'd take a knife. Give me the choicest piece of the liver. Be nice and raw. And sweet and juicy. If I need a new shirt, new pair of moccasins, she'd take a fresh deer hide and shoot until it was soft as a baby's skin. Wonderful. Oh, yeah, she'd cook, build my house for me, chop the wood, take care of my guns. Ah, yes, ma'am. Nothing like a little Indian gal to make a man real comfortable. Feel that. Go on, it won't bite you. Feel of it. Ah. Did you ever touch anything as soft as that? Took a Cheyenne squaw year chawing to get it that way. <sighs> yes, ma'am, I couldn't agree with you more. Agree? Yeah. But you belong in the old Spanish family. Lots of men, servants to wait on you, hand and foot. You're pretty positive, then, that I could never get along. Oh, yes, I am. You see, out here it takes two. A man and his woman. Working together, working real hard. To make a life and build a home. You couldn't go for that. Not at all. Excuse me, Miss Montalvo. Jim? Yes, Lieutenant. My orderly happened to discover a very good bottle of port wine in our gear. I was wondering if uh, perhaps you'd care to join in a glass with me. A delightful idea. And I'm so flattered that you thought to ask me. Not at all. Such charming company is hard to come by. Do you excuse me, Stockton? Sure, sure. Senor Stockton, I do not believe that you are so simple as you wish to appear. <laughs> This is charming, Lieutenant. The most beautiful visitor ever to grace a soldier's tent. To an officer and a gentleman who brings culture and refinement into the savage wilderness. Mm. Very pleasant. Does it compare with the product of your California vineyards? I don't know. It's been some time since I've tasted California wine. So you're finding California as beautiful and as pleasant as you left us? You're not married, are you, Lieutenant? No. No, but I hope to be one day. When I have something more to offer than a lieutenant's pay. Would you expect your wife to butcher a buffalo? When I what? Or keep the children out of sight? I, I, I... Or, or, or chew hides to make your shoes? Well, of course not. Why do you ask? Ooh, nothing. Just curious. Senora? Hey, something eating you? Indians. There are no signs of any. Yeah, that's what's wrong. Why ain't we seen them? They ain't got no reason to hide out. Well, you know we're not gonna stay in their godforsaken desert. Look, why if they follow on the train asking for presents and hangouts? It don't make no sense. Well, not unless they know some reason we don't. I think we better ride out ahead of the train tomorrow and find out. Come on, let's get some shut-eye. <laughs> Either side of the train. Well, if they were trailing us, they'd sure keep the draws one side or the other. All the time, my insides are telling me we're heading for trouble. Even though we can't see it. I can almost smell it. Smell it? You get it too, Lopez? Get what? Burn wood. Ashes from an old fire. Upwind of us. 
Could be the wagon train or back of us. I don't get a thing. Jim, you got a nose like a coyote. Another wagon train. Yankees. We shall have a surprise ready when they reach the California border. No. You say we raid wagons. We do not fight soldiers. Why not? You outnumber them three to one. Your guns are as good as theirs. Maybe. But my braves do not yet know how to use them well. Soldiers will shoot straighter. Kill many. No. We do not fight soldiers. No, you're right, Jim. Somebody camped around here. How long ago, you suppose? Well, let's call the dry, maybe this morning. Do fall with a wet if it'd been last night. Engines, I guess. All but one. One leather boot with a pointed toe. Taxi. No, I don't think so. Take a look at this little mark, this back of the heel. That's a spur mark. Yeah. Only one kind of spur has a rod with points long enough to reach the ground like that. California Vaquero. California? Well, if a Mexican from California's around here, what's he hiding out for? Better ride back and talk that over to the lieutenant. Maybe he knows some reasons. Like what? Like maybe it has something to do with United States troops riding a thousand miles west into foreign territory. Maybe you sure can't smell wood ashes, but seems to me you've got a long nose for trouble. Let's go. Well, this was a time when the lieutenant and his soldier boys were ready to say goodbye to us. This was a separation point. And from here on, we'd move on to California alone, while the troopers headed north on the trail to Oregon. I hate to say goodbye, Lieutenant. Perhaps it won't be goodbye. But as you say, hasta la vista. And you will be coming to California. Later? Well, that no one can tell right now. I have my orders and they take me up to Oregon. But sometimes orders are changed. I hope yours will be. I'd like to show you California and our rancho. And I'm sure you would like my father. <laughs> if he's anything like his daughter. Well, anyway, I wish you all good luck. Happy journey. And homecoming. Now I feel completely alone, Augustina. Among the barbarians. Hey, Jim, look at that. The soldiers are leaving the train. If our hunch is right, we're in for some real trouble. What are we going to do now? Well, there's only one thing to do. Try to talk the lieutenant out of it. Come on. Hey, lieutenant. That's you, Stockton. I wonder where you disappeared. You're leaving the train. That's plain enough. But you can't do that. I not only can, I am doing it. But why, lieutenant? Order, Stockton. Now, you knew that we were to separate at the border. But you're leaving these people helpless. That's right. Against what? You better tell them what we found, Jim. Well, it might not mean much to you, Lieutenant. But the Indians know we're here. We're being watched. Maybe all the way from Bridger's Fort. You're sure of that? That's why we rode scout this morning. Yeah, and there's a white man with him. Might be a Mexican. Yeah, we're not sure about that, Beaver. But you yourself said, Jim, the boot tracks and the spur marks... You mean you expect me to halt my route of march on evidence like that? Well, I didn't suppose you would. You can give me lessons in your job, Stockton. But I'll tell you something about command responsibility. The first lesson a professional soldier learns and the last he forgets is that it's his job to follow orders, not to question them, or to presume that someone's made a mistake or to think that he knows how to do it better. I'm an officer in the United States Army. I have my orders and I intend to obey them. 
It's as simple as that. Goodbye, gentlemen. Well, of all the stubborn, stiff back slaps. Ah, he's got a point, Beaver. I guess there's got to be somebody around knows how to obey orders. Now, I suppose that someday the lieutenant might find himself in a spot where there's nobody to give orders. What's he going to do then? Come on. There, you see? The train comes on alone, deserted by the army. But if we attack, the army may still ride to save them. Didn't your scouts say the Yankee bluecoats were heading towards Medicine Rock Canyon? That is true. Suppose the army rode into the canyon and then found it impossible to ride out again. That Mexican lieutenant was a smart hombre, all right. He was going to bottle up our troops in the canyon, and then he and the Shoshones were going to make short work of the wagon train. Right into the ambush. Like sheep following a Judas goat. I got the soldier boys trapped. Let the train next. Come on.
Young fun, eh, Beaver? Yeah, fun, little pal. Ah, uh, don't fool yourself. We're in as much trouble as kill Patrick. Either one of us got a chance of getting out of here alone, but together we might have. Good idea, if we can only do it. I'll do it if I have to blast him out of here. One slim chance between us. I'm depending on you to see that nothing happens to ladies. Right. I don't know what those Indians thought I was doing. They sure tried hard to find out. All I knew was I'd have to get out of the wagon before it hit the boulders the Shoshones had dumped into the canyon. If I didn't, that gunpowder I was carrying was sure gonna blow me to kingdom come. Fine words. You and your men, we owe you everything. If there was only some way that we could thank you. There is a way. You can turn these wagons around and head back to where you came from right now. Go back? Back to what, Lieutenant? Everything that we have is right here. We burned our bridges, all of them. We can't go back. And forget California. That way is nothing but trouble. More than we just had. Head north to Oregon, where we're going. And the army can guarantee your safety. And what about our land? Every penny that we had, we sent on to an agent in California to buy land for us. We have to go on. We just don't have any choice. You've got a choice, Lieutenant. What? Change your route. Go to Oregon with the way of California. You'll be giving all these people a chance. Change my route. 
Just like that, huh? All right. Suppose I did change my route. Take my troop across a foreign territory into California. Do you know what that would be? An overt act. In diplomacy between nations. Do you know what an overt act would mean? War. That's why my orders from Washington were at all costs to stay clear of California and head north to Oregon. I see. You people will have to decide for yourselves what you want to do. I can give you all the supplies and ammunition I can. As for me, the decision isn't mine to make. I do wish you good luck. Well, he's sure a stubborn one. Old tribe of wild Indians couldn't change his mind. Yeah. Hey, Beaver. Better change the sentries. Right. Frank. Get some shit out. Oh, Senor Stockton. About time you cut that down to Jim, isn't it? I haven't had a chance to, to thank you properly. About what? About saving our lives in the attack. The Army saved all of our lives, including mine. I just gave him a chance. What is it, Jim? It gets into men like you and makes you run off by yourselves. Waste your lives. Waste? You'll end up old, lonely, without a home, with nothing. I'm afraid you got me all wrong, ma'am. I got no idea of staying in the mountains alone the rest of my life. I just been waiting for an excuse to come down out of them and stay. An excuse? You mean like, uh, like an Indian girl who will chew your moccasins? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's about it. Then stay up in the mountains and rot. That's where you belong. Well, now what brought that on? All I said was... No, that's females. <laughs> Strange breed. You know, you can't figure them out. You're better off not trying. <laughs> oh, shut up. It felt mighty lonely without the guns of the troopers along for protection. So Beaver and I thought we'd better put in a lot more time scouting ahead of the train, just in case those Shoshones were going to come up with some new ideas. Redskins ain't gonna hit us again. There ain't enough of them left healthy. Why are we following them? Find out who talked them into jumping us in the first place. Give them Spanish rifles to do it with. Oh. Well, looks like they went that way. Yeah, not all of them. Take a look. Well, what do you know? It's the Spur Heels itself. Well, what do we do now? Follow them or him? We follow him. It wasn't hard finding what we were looking for. Not with that Mexican soldier wearing those big spurs and marking up the ground every time he took a step. He couldn't have made it any easier if he'd written us a letter. That's him, all right. I'd like to stab a horse to death with them there spurs. Anyway, he can talk a lot better without a bullet hole in him. You think somehow you can get that Indian away from the fire? Maybe. Good. I'll take care of our friend.
Yeah. If you can only talk half as good as you can use that sword. Why should I talk to gringos? His Indian friends know some pretty good tricks to loosen a man's tongue. How you take the Rappahoes, for instance? They're like choking a man to death with green buffalo hide. What about the Sioux? They use fire. How about the Apaches? Their cactus juice, little red ants. Bearing a man all the way up to his neck. Why should I not talk? I did nothing dishonorable. Only my duty. You call giving guns to the Indians doing your duty? I am Lieutenant Felipe Ruiz of the Republic of Mexico. Without sufficient troops to repel the enemy who invades my country's territory. Why should I not use whatever means I can? Enemies? You talk like there's a war going on. Mexico declared war on the United States two weeks ago. War? Doggone, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Yeah. Tie him up. Get him back to wagons. I'll see if I can catch up with the army. Maybe now I can pound some common sense into kill Patrick's head. Professional soldier arming Indians against the wagon train? Can you come back with us? Help me get to California safe? Suppose this man of yours is lying. It would mean the end of my career if I made a mistake. A court martial. It could mean the end of a lot of Americans on that train, too, Lieutenant. You're making my position very difficult, Stockton. That's the way it is. You're their only hope. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. Well, you can think, Lieutenant. You can feel a little bit, too. And for once in your military-minded life, don't look for red tape excuses for not doing something. It's too big a responsibility, Stockton. I'm only a lieutenant without orders. Oh, I'm glad I'm not an officer and a gentleman, Lieutenant. Because I never learned to desert my friends. Leave them to be butchered and call it doing my duty. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Have the man prepare to move out in 10 minutes. Yes, sir. Jim Stockton and I will ride on ahead. Blaze the trail for you back to the wagon train. Yes, sir. I want to question this prisoner of yours myself. Whatever you say, Lieutenant. There's something else you can think about. What's that? Miss Montavo is a Californian. She's an enemy now. Yes. There is to be an attack on the fort? Si, patron, that is what I have heard. Then there must have been an open declaration of war. A time of much trouble, patron. All those poor women and children in the fort. General Torina has cannon. Doyon. Si, patron. Doyon, I must trust you. All of us who work for you, patron, we will die for you. Gracias, Toyon. We may all have to die before this is over. Now, we must hurry. Consuelo's father was a brave man, all right. He'd managed to escape the guards at his hacienda, and now he was risking his own life to save the lives of the people in the fort of Monterey.
Comandante. You must not doubt me. General Torreña is on his way here now with hundreds of troops and artillery to attack the fort. He's a Spaniard, Kimball. I'm a Californian, loyal to California. If I were not, would I have escaped from my guards and ridden here to warn you? I tell you, you must evacuate the women and children. If this fort falls into Torina's hands, California is lost. Take a thousand men to get Torina out of here. Sam, send a messenger to Fort Klamath in Oregon. Tell the army we need help, pronto. Right. Now we'll see about the ones we have to evacuate. Any idea where they might be safe? I know a place, high in the hills, near the mountain pass, where the troops from Fort Klamath must pass through on their way here. Good. <laughs> Pass up ahead. It's the only way in. If they wanted to ambush us, that'd be the place. I'm going ahead and scout it. I'll go with you. Senores! Hola, wait! Senores, you are from Port Klamath? No, we're not. And who might you be, sir? I am Don Carlos Montalvo. At the Rancho de los... Montalvo? Not Consuelo's father. You know my daughter? He's back there with the wagon train. Come on, Andre! My father! Stop, please! Don't battle! Aquí! Aquí! Father! Ah, querida! Papacito! Papacito! Mia! Ah, it's good to see you. And once General Torreina has captured the fort, then California is lost. He may have it soon. Then my men and I will attack. No, you would have no chance. You would be outnumbered five, maybe six to one. And Torreina has cannon. Well, every man on this wagon train will fight. We didn't come this far to just give up. No, it would not be enough. Our only chance is the garrison from Port Klamath. If they can arrive before Monterey Falls, then perhaps your combined forces may have a chance. What if they don't? Well, maybe we can't save the fort, but we might be able to keep it from Torino. I don't understand. Blow it up. Destroy it. Could one man get past the Mexican lines at night alone? It's possible. What about the troops from Plymouth? I'll go in tonight and place the demolition charges. If Torino attacks the fort before the Klamath troops get here, we'll blow it up. Otherwise, we'll try to hold out while you hit Torino from the outside. I better go with you, Jim. No. You take the trail to Klamath. Meet the troops and tell them double time all the way. You better get started. Right. Senor, would you draw me a layout of the fort? See. Si. What was decided? What will they do? How can one man be so wrong about another? About... About Jim Stockton? I am pegged for the most conceited, self-centered, antisocial. Here, every step of the way, he said to show me what duty really means. I'll say this for Senor Montavo, his information was good. Doing what he told me, I was able to get through the Mexican lines without being spotted even once. So that's the plan. If the troops get here before the Mexicans attack, Kilpatrick will lead a charge. If they don't, we'll blow up the fort. Beaver hit the trail he knew the troops from Fort Klamath in Oregon would have to take. found more than he bargained for, the messenger who had been sent to bring the troops. He'd been ambushed, and his message had never got to Klamath. Good 
is the day. Hey, Senor Adjutant. Breakfast in the field. But tonight, we dine in the fortress of Monterey. It wasn't much after dawn when the Mexican army started to move into position. With all the rifles and artillery they had, it sure seemed like they wouldn't have much trouble taking that Monterey fort. We kept an eye on them. But it's going to take more than watching to beat them. Reno's moving his men into place. He's going to attack, all right. From the troops we hear from Klamath? Something may have happened. Under forced march, they should have been here last night, certainly by dawn this morning. Any sign of the troops? They ain't coming. Found your messenger dead. Never got there. God help Stockton and those poor devils in the fort. God help California. The troops are all in position, me general. Is the artillery laid on the fort? See, si, me general. Order them to commence firing. Placing those powder kegs in the right places was a ticklish job. I just had to guess that the Mexican attack would come at the front of the fort, and when the powder blew, it would take enough of the Mexican army with it. Our own place, that's the last one. And still no sign of the army. They're starting the charge! All your men, back from the walls, undercover! Yankees are blowing up the fort. You know, Lieutenant, if you and your troops and the men from the train here were to hit them now, you know, from behind, by surprise, what do you suppose they'd do? Well, now's a good enough time to find out. I believe you are a prisoner, General. There it is, Jim, the future. Americans and Spaniards joined together as one in California. Yeah. I'd say the Americans and Spaniards are going to be joined together in more ways than one. Oh, has something else happened? I just left your daughter, sir. She's going to join an American in marriage. Congratulations, Kilpatrick. I'd say she's getting a fine man. Yes, I really think she is. Consuela? I'm sorry. I tried to make him understand. But I, I think you'll have to tell him yourself. She turned me down, Jim. And the rest is up to you. Good luck. Much obliged. Young lady, would you please explain to me what is happening around here? I'm afraid I can't. Until you let him alone. So he can propose to me. Him, consider our conversation finished. And you have my good wishes.
I know it isn't ladylike, but... Would you mind kissing me just once before you proposed? Yeah, a man can get mighty used to that. But Lieutenant Kilpatrick said that, that you were going to stay with the Army until the war was over. That's right. But if you promise to wait, we'll promise to make the war as short as possible. I'll wait. Hey, Jim, wait for me! Well, that was it. I had a girl in back of me and a war in front of me. I guess a man can't ask for more excitement than that. Gave me kind of a boot, too. Knowing I'd had a hand in putting that American flag where it was flying now. to your shoulder. Pull back the hammer. Point the barrel. Then pull the trigger here. If you sign a treaty with us, I will also assign Lieutenant Ruiz as my liaison. He will teach your braves to shoot. What will you decide? The Shoshones will sign with you. No white man shall pass our lands. We'd been trapping in the mountains for a solid year without having a speck of Indian trouble. I guess our luck had been too good to hold out. Maybe it's because we were in a hurry to get to Fort Bridger with our furs that Beaver Lopez and I moved on ahead of the other boys. Well, it's a good thing we did. Oh, uh, we sure got plenty skins. We get back to Fort Bridger, folks ain't gonna believe that there are many beaver skins in the whole wide world. <laughs> hey, Jim, we go back to the same place next year? Lopez, we never go back no place. <laughs> Are you just going back someplace where you've been, Lopez? When there's so many places you ain't been. Looking at this map, I guess there was no mountain or lowland I hadn't traveled over. If it wasn't one thing, it was another. Trapping or scouting or just plain hunting for food to stay alive. I'd seen the wagon trains moving west over the Sierras, bound for the good ranching land in California. And at different times, I'd seen four different flags fly over that territory. Yes, sir, that California was sure a rich prize for the country that could hold it. Right now, it was Mexico running California's government. And the felon... Sure, I don't live to pay you. 
going to rush you. Now listen to me. Wait until you can't miss. Then pick off the chief. That way, maybe we can break him up. No, 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 the shoulder, it's just a bruise. I think we can make it. That old Shoshone war party's out there hiding that rib. Our only chance to get out of here before daylight. Lucky for us, these Indians don't like to attack at night. Seeing some of the dead Indians and our boys lying out there gave me an idea. If I could get those Shoshones riding off on a wild goose chase, it'd give us a chance to get out of the trap. One thing had sure been bothering me, though. This was the first time Shoshones had ever used guns. And I'm in. Damn trouble with you is you got a disease, a rising fever. Always got to see what's on the other side of the hill. And I'll tell you, I'll be mighty glad to ride over these hills. I got a feeling this country is bad medicine. Here. What's the matter? Come on. Hey, Jim, then there's engine pony tracks. Yeah. She showed these today. Kind of funny they took off to the wood instead of staying with the trail, though. He's been awful quiet. We know here a bird chirp for over a week. Yeah, too quiet. Oh, you two are imagining things. I'll bet you five beaver skins there ain't an engine within 20 miles of here. Dreamers, yeah, but them Shoshones have guns. <laughs> they got guns, all right. Don't you forget, you owe me five beaver skins. Yeah, bet you five more. Charge was the commander of all Mexican forces in the area, General Rafael Torino. And General Torino was going to hold on to California, no matter how he had to do it, even if it meant making a deal with the Indians. Shoshones bid you welcome. It is an honor to meet the great leader of our Shoshone brothers. We are met here to arrange a treaty. An alliance between your people and mine. But an alliance is for fighting together. Precisely. Your people and mine have a common enemy chief. The white Yankees who swarm over the mountains to engulf our land. All white men are ready to steal Indian lands. Not my government. We will guarantee your lands forever if you will help us keep California from the Yankees. The wagon trains are armed with guns. My braves have only bows and spears and knives. We would have no chance. I'm aware of that. And if you will sign an alliance with us, Lieutenant Ruiz, we will arm your braves with rifles like this, and plenty of powder and shot. 